Well, it's great to see you all. Amazing building to come into. And of course, Manchester is very similar in a sense to where I grew up. I grew up in East London. My dad was a great artist and sculptor and we had a great life. So, but luckily for me, at the age of four, I discovered two things. One, I discovered glitter and magic markers and plastic scissors. And secondly, I was very fortunate that my father had an eclectic mix of friends. And one of them was a guy called Dennis Gray, who was head of IPC magazines. And he said to my father, he's just married this woman from New Zealand. And she was an expert, unbelievably then, in learning difficulties, dyslexia, OCD. She was very, very clever. And she saw me as a kid and she said to my father, he's not the village idiot, but he needs help. So luckily for me, I was home taught. So I found my passion. I found my passion. I found my magic markers and plastic scissors and glitter. At four years old, I would finish my studies and I would go and help Dennis and we'd work on building a mirror dinghy. We'd photograph the article and then we would create it until one day when I was 13, all very happy, and there was a knock at the door. And the knock at the door was a man called the school board man. And the school board man went, this kid, by law, has got to go to school. And then at 15, the head of art enters me in for this thing called European Artist of the Year competition. Anyway, I won it, I won it. So it was a right result. So all of a sudden, this very posh bloke comes up and he says, Steve, I'm 15. He goes, would you come and work with us in our design agency? It's like, too right, yeah. So I go and I work with them. And luckily for me, they say, we're putting you on the Muppet account. The Muppets. So I had the most fabulous time working on the Muppets from 16. And I'm coming up to, I've been there about three quarters of a year, about eight months. And then Jim Henson drops a big bombshell on me. He says, Steve, there's a man over the road. He wants to meet you. He loves your work and he wants you to meet him because he's, he seriously wants to talk to you. OK, I said, who've I got to go and see? He said, you've got to go and see a bloke called George Lucas. He said he's a film producer. He's made a film called American Graffiti and he's making a new film and he wants to see you. So I go over the road. So I said, oh, he's a mate. I said, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to work in the art department. I said, what do you want me to do in the art department? He went, anything you want. So I went, can I see the art department? He went, yeah, of course you can, come with me. So he took me to this art department that is just amazing. It was the biggest carpentry shop I've ever seen in my entire life. There was plastic vacuum form machines, there were spray booths, there was ironmongery welders. It was like, wow. I came back, I sat with him. I went, whoa, I said, that is the best art department I've ever seen. He said, good. He said, what do you think? I said, well, can I ask what's the film going to be about? He said, well, he said, it's going to be the greatest science fiction film ever. I went, oh, what's it going to be called? He said, it's going to be called Star Wars. I went, that is a good name. He said, you like it? I went, that's a blinding name. He said, yeah. So I said, yeah, I would. So I, I worked on Star Wars, I worked on Empire Strikes Back, and I worked on Raiders of a Lost Ark. I had a great time working in the films. It was fantastic, but I'd kind of, you know, I travelled everywhere, went to all these great countries. But then, I, but I was always, but I love brands. I loved brands. I love brands, that power of a brand, what it does. And then I decided to go and set my studio up. And George Lucas had made a few phones and all that. All of a sudden, Christian Dior came to us, so we branded Christian. I did Christian Dior, a big concept for Dior. Then I did a big concept for Cartier. And then all the great brands started coming. I did Hamley's Toy Store. And then I just got involved in all these brands. And I'm busy, I'm busy, busy. So now I need an assistant. After about eight days of looking at portfolios, this little girl comes in, blonde girl. Leslie Lamb. She comes in. She's got a letter with her. All she wants to do is keep giving me the letter. I went, I don't want anything letter. I said, I want to look at your work. Give me your work. So she reluctantly gets a portfolio out and I look at this work and it's like, oh, sweet mystery of life, I found you. I opened this book up and I went, wow, 
amazing stuff. It's totally unique, absolutely executed in a way that I've never seen anything like it. And I said to Leslie, Leslie, you've got the job. She burst into tears. I went, have you heard what I f***ing told you? I said, I didn't tell you you didn't have the job. Wins if you haven't got the job, you got the job. She says, yeah, she says, but you haven't read what was in there. I said, well, well, first of all, I'm dyslexic. I can't read what's in there. What is it? She said, it's all my qualifications. Every time I've gone for a job, they only want to see that. And I went, you're serious, are you? That's your f***ing qualifications. That's your qualifications, mate. F*** the letter, bin it. Get rid of it now, rip it up. You're working with me. So Leslie's now working with me. She's amazing. My mum says, you know that girl? What a lovely girl. I said, yes, mum, you keep telling me she's a lovely girl. I know she's a lovely girl. He said, well, she said, I'm going to tell you a story I've never told you before. When I was 14, I was at a school called St Martin's in the field, which is a good school. She won a scholarship to it. She said, and she was coming back, and then she came back into Bethnal Green in a street. And unfortunately, even then, they got kind of, she got aggravation. All the kids were saying to my mum, your dad's dead, your dad's dead, your dad's dead, your dad's dead. All the kids on her. Anyway, she ran home. She got home and unfortunately it's true. She gets back, all the neighbours are outside the house. And her father was a fire officer, my grandfather, who I never met, who was up a ladder putting a fire out and we all come down and done it. So my mum, 14, she's the eldest of nine siblings. Her mother, Czechoslovakian, can't speak English. And lo and behold, she now knows her life is going to change. It's going to change. She said, and it really is going to, going to... She knew, she said, that was it. And she was thinking, how is she going to look after her mother and her brothers and her sisters? She's 14 years old. She said, the next door neighbour made a job up. He pretended that he needed a PA. And he said, Maureen... You can't believe it. I need a PA. Would you be my PA? And she couldn't believe her luck. She went, oh, yes, thank you. She said, you know what his name was? I said, no, Mum, what was his name? She said, his name was Robert Lamb. See when Leslie Lamb comes in the morning, whether they're related. The next morning, Leslie Lamb comes in. I said to Leslie, Leslie, tell me. Tell me about your father. She said, yeah, my father's called Robert Lamb. He's got a big factory business. Shows you, right? Her father gave my mother her first job and I gave his daughter her first job, which shows you what goes around comes around. And that is key. That is key to life. For me, I've always stuck people in front of people. Whenever I work, whatever we work on, Whatever brands we're working with, they'll go, Steve, can you stick me in front of Skanska? Someone will go, can you stick me in front of Purdy Guns? Can you? I'm always doing it. Reciprocative business. It's very good karma, and it's what we need to do to help and look after everybody that's around us. Another big day was when I was nine years old. Nine. Nine. And in all poor families, you always have a rich aunt. And my rich aunt would always buy all the things from, that I made, paintings and drawings, and she would buy them off me as well. And I went round her house once with my mum, posh house, and she had cabinets full of glass and china and amazing things. And I said to my aunt, when do you use all this? And she said, on special occasions. On special occasions she used it. And I went, oh. And a week later, she died and never used all. She never used any of it, none of it. And I'm nine years old and I said to my mum, mum, I said, guess what? She said, what? I said, as from today, mate, I said, I'm not gonna wear all those clothes that you make me wear. I'm now gonna put on my party best as well. I'm gonna wear my best outfit every day. I'm gonna dress for a party every day and a party will come to me. I'm not gonna wait for a special occasion. And I'd like to say thank you all very, very much indeed. And thank you, thank you.